We are watching the most promising player in tech going from hero to villain in less than a year. That's exactly what is happening with OpenAI. Once a frontrunner in the world of artificial intelligence, it has recently found itself at the center of a storm of controversy. While it is acclaimed for its groundbreaking AI models like ChatGPT, the company has experienced a swift and public fall from grace, causing shockwaves throughout the tech industry. The rage against OpenAI has become so intense that users are now comparing it to Adobe. And if you know anything about tech, that's about as harsh as it gets. But this is the company that gave us ChatGPT, that promised to democratize AI, that was supposed to ensure artificial intelligence benefited everyone. So what went wrong? How did the golden child of AI become tech's newest villain? If you go to Reddit, which is like the digital thermometer for online fury, you'll find posts like this one from one synth guy. Don't get me started with the closed source models they have that were trained using the work of unassuming individuals who will never see a penny for it. Put it up on GitHub, they said. I'm all for open source. But when a company turns around and charges you for a product they made with freely and publicly made content, that is where I draw the line. This post is basically calling out OpenAI for using free, open source work to train their models and then selling the results without giving anything back to the creators. And that's what most people think. But to understand this spectacular fall from grace, we need to go back to late 2022. When ChatGPT first dropped, it was like magic. ChatGPT. Maybe you've heard of it. If you haven't, then get ready, because this promises to be the viral sensation that could completely reset how we do things. Everyone was trying it and imagining a future where AI could solve just about anything. OpenAI's valuation shot up to $150 billion. The company had the perfect hero origin story, a nonprofit turned capped profit organization led by the charismatic Sam Altman, working to ensure AI benefits humanity. It was like a tech fairy tale. But as this Redditor pointed out, Sam Altman is so calculated to the point where there were times when he seemed to be shooting OpenAI in the foot during his talk. This move was to conceal his real intentions, to climb the ladder and take it with him. Think of data like the new oil of the digital age. Everyone wants it. But what OpenAI was building went far beyond typical data collection. They were constructing something that looked more like an all-seeing digital nervous system. And that's not hyperbole. Let me show you what I mean. It started innocently enough. OpenAI struck deals with some of the biggest names in media, Time Magazine, Financial Times, Le Monde, Prisa Media. Then came the heavyweight, Condé Nast. And this brought deals with Vogue, The New Yorker, Vanity Fair, and Wired into the fold. On paper, these were just content partnerships. Pay for access to articles, train some AI models, everybody wins, right? But here's where it gets interesting. And by interesting, I mean concerning. These deals weren't just about getting access to articles. OpenAI was after something much more valuable. They wanted to understand how you interact with every piece of content you see. Your reading patterns, what makes you click, how long you spend on each article, what keeps you engaged. They were building a map of human attention, one click at a time. And that was just the beginning. When OpenAI invested in Opal, a webcam startup, it wasn't to get better video conference calls in their offices. The goal was to enhance these cameras with AI that could capture and analyze your biometric data, facial expressions, emotional states, even what they called inferred psychological states. Take a moment to think about what that means. AI watching you through your webcam, trying to read your emotions. Just when you thought they couldn't go deeper, OpenAI partnered with Thrive Global to launch Thrive AI Health, Sure, they promised robust privacy and security guardrails, but we've heard that before. Remember what happened when Google DeepMind partnered with the Royal Free London NHS Trust? They ended up facing legal action over how they handled private health data. Or look at Microsoft's partnership with Providence Health, another AI health project that raised serious privacy concerns. Professor Uri Gao from The Conversation put it perfectly when he wrote, it is not difficult to imagine a scenario in which centralized control over many kinds of data would let OpenAI exert significant influence over people. Was he being dramatic? Maybe, but maybe not. This was a company building tools to understand not just what you read or watch, but how you feel while doing it. 
You see, while everyone was focused on ChatGPT's ability to write poetry or help with homework, OpenAI was quietly assembling something much bigger, a comprehensive system for understanding and potentially influencing human behavior. They went from promising to democratize AI to positioning themselves as the gatekeepers of humanity's digital footprint. By mid-2024, while running OpenAI, Altman co-founded this side project called WorldCoin. The pitch was ambitious. Create a global financial network and identification system using biometric identification. The method? Scanning people's irises, the most unique part of your eye, and storing that data forever. And people actually went for it. WorldCoin had convinced, or should we say, enticed, more than 6.5 million people across 40 countries to let them scan their irises. The company framed it as some kind of democratic revolution in global finance. But look closer, and you'll see something that made privacy advocates lose sleep. More than a dozen jurisdictions either suspended WorldCoin's operations or put them under intense scrutiny. Spain, Portugal, Argentina, Britain, France. In Bavaria, authorities weren't just concerned. They were ready to bring down the hammer. They started deliberating whether WorldCoin violated European data privacy regulations, a move that could potentially bar the company from operating anywhere in Europe. The main issue? It wasn't just about collecting sensitive biometric data, though that was concerning enough. It was about how this data was being collected, stored, and potentially used. We're talking about intimate biological information that, unlike a password, you can't just change if it gets compromised. Once your iris scan is out there, it's out there forever. Sure, this is a Sam Altman side project, but this is also a direct reflection of the philosophy we were seeing at OpenAI. Gather as much data as possible and worry about the implications later. The list of controversies goes on. Let's focus on the best bromance in tech, as Mr. Altman names it. Microsoft owns 49% of OpenAI's equity. They invested $13 billion in this company. Critics called it a market-paralyzing gorgon, where OpenAI's independence seemed increasingly questionable. So let's break down what really happened here. See, when Microsoft invests in OpenAI, they're not just buying a piece of the company like everybody does when we invest. What they've actually created is what Elon Musk's lawsuit calls a de facto merger. All the benefits of acquiring OpenAI without any of those pesky, regulatory headaches that usually come with big tech acquisitions. Pretty clever, right? From a nonprofit in 2015, OpenAI transformed into what Musk's legal team calls a $157 billion for profit market paralyzing Gorgon, and in just eight years. That's why Elon Musk is going after them. The lawsuit alleges that Microsoft and OpenAI didn't just partner up, they actively worked to monopolize the market for generative artificial intelligence. The complaint argues they used their partnership to sideline competitors through what amounts to an exclusive licensing agreement that somehow managed to fly under the regulatory radar. And remember that bit about OpenAI's mission to benefit all of humanity? Well, the lawsuit claims this merger that wasn't officially a merger effectively voided OpenAI's license with Microsoft and let them keep what the legal documents call ill-gotten gains. Not exactly the democratization of AI they promised, is it? May 2024 brought a devastating blow to OpenAI's credibility. Jan Lika, co-lead of the company's Super Alignment Safety Team, resigned with a damning accusation. The company was prioritizing shiny products over safety. His team had been promised a fifth of OpenAI's total computing resources for their critical safety research. Instead, they found themselves sailing against the wind, struggling to access the computing power they desperately needed. But wait, what does a super alignment safety team do and why do they need that access? Well, turns out they had a super important mission, figuring out how to control hypothetical future AI systems that could be far more powerful than anything we have today, the long-term guardians of humanity's AI future. And on the very same day, OpenAI's chief scientist, Ilya Sutskever, who co-led the super alignment team with Lika, also walked away. This was the same team that had already lost three staff members since March, including two who were fired for allegedly leaking information. The exodus was so bad that OpenAI had no choice but to disband the super alignment team entirely. 
When confronted with these departures, Sam Altman tried to smooth things over, saying he was grateful for Leak's contributions and acknowledging there was a lot more safety work to be done. Together with Greg Brockman, OpenAI's president, he promised they take our role here very seriously and carefully weigh feedback on our actions. But actions speak louder than words, and Leak's next move said it all. He joined OpenAI rival Anthropic to continue the super alignment mission. But when the people responsible for keeping AI safe start jumping ship, you know something seriously wrong. By late 2024, the legal battles were mounting. The New York Times and Daily News sued over the unauthorized use of their content. The publishers had actually reached an agreement with OpenAI to search their datasets for potentially infringing content. Simple enough, right? OpenAI provided two virtual machines for the publishers' legal teams to dig through their data. The lawyers spent over 150 hours meticulously combing through these digital haystacks. But then, then came the accident. On November 14th, OpenAI engineers allegedly deleted critical search data from one of the virtual machines. When confronted, OpenAI claimed it was just a technical error, something about a configuration change and a temporary cache. The evidence was gone forever. The global ripples of this legal tsunami reached all the way to India, where Asian News International ANI, filed another lawsuit, the first of its kind against OpenAI in the country. They demanded $236,910 in initial damages. The 287-page lawsuit said that OpenAI was using their content without permission and they were allegedly generating fake news and attributing it to ANI. But if these legal battles were a storm, the Sora controversy was a Category 5 hurricane. OpenAI's unreleased video generation model became the flashpoint for years of pent-up frustration in the creative community. A group calling themselves Sora PR Puppets leaked the tool in protest of what they termed art washing, using artists for unpaid labor under the guise of collaboration. About 300 artists were testing the tool, working for free on bug testing, feedback, and experimental work. For free. For a company valued at $150 billion, and they didn't have any clue. What really set artists off was the control OpenAI allegedly exerted over the creative process. According to the leakers, the company demanded to review and approve any videos generated during the early access program before they could be published. Just like having a corporate supervisor looking over your shoulder. This, plus the Scarlett Johansson controversy, where OpenAI allegedly imitated her voice for GPT-4 despite her explicit refusal to participate, perfectly shows the company's apparent disregard for consent and creative rights. OpenAI is facing a huge trust problem right now, and it's not looking good. Sure, their user numbers are stagnating, but that's just the surface. The real issue is how much potential they've wasted. They started with big promises to make AI accessible and helpful for everyone, but now they're more like a warning about what happens when profit and ambition take over good intentions. And only time will tell if they are able to return to their original vision.